Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a follow-up video for my previous one where I talked about how to set uh, specific P or, uh, uh, spot colors in a raster file in Adobe Photoshop. Today I'm going to be talking more specifically about how to set those colors as Pantone colors and also how to get your Pantone color books back in your Adobe programs. Uh, many of you have probably already figured out ways around this because this happened a few years back where Adobe and Pantone had a little bit of a falling out. Now if you want to have your Pantone colors in your Adobe program you have to pay for a subscription using the Pantone Connect. So if you have, if you can afford this or if this is part of your business and this is just basically part of your business expense and that's how it's going to be, you want to go ahead and you want to use the Pantone Connect so that you have the most up-to-date, accurate library possible for all of your colors in all of your Adobe programs. And to access that, you go into your Creative Cloud app, you go to your Plugins tab here, and then you'll see this one right here where it says uh, uh, Pantone Connect, and you install it, and you're going to do that for all three of uh, Photoshop, and InDesign, and Illustrator. And that's going to give you the most accurate representation of your uh, Pantone colors. However, if you can't afford it or if you just want a cheap workaround, what you can do is you can put the old books that uh, were still supported back in 2019 or so back into your latest and greatest versions of your Adobe programs. Uh, keep in mind that I, like here I have 2023 and 2024 for all my uh, InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. When you get to the 2025 and 2026 versions, etc., you're going to have to re-input all of these every single time. So there is a little bit of a downside, but at the same token, I mean, this does provide you with the cheapest alternative. And also remember that your Pantone books are going to be your basically kind of your Bible. These are physical printed books that your offset press uh, pressmen and your digital pressmen are going to use to match colors with. As long as you have the names of the colors set properly in your files that you send over to the printer or to the uh, uh, as you make plates, then it doesn't really matter too much because on the offset side of things, they're going to dump a can of ink into their ink fountain based on whatever color that is chosen out of the Pantone book by your customer. On the digital side of things, the RIP software, the, whether it be Fiery or another uh, Creo or whatever else you're using as a front end, is going to look for the actual Pantone color and match it accordingly based on whatever printing press you're using, such as you know a Ricoh machine or Canon, uh, Konica Minolta, Xerox, etc. So as long as the name is correct, it doesn't really matter too much because the machine will interpret that accordingly. So even if it's a, let's say a 185 red color and in your photo, or excuse me, in your file, you have everything set to like 100% cyan. When the machine sees that, it'll still interpret it as 185 red. So when it prints, it'll look perfect. Now, Obviously, you want to try to have as much of an accurate representation as possible just for proofing purposes and um, just to maintain easy color consistency throughout the whole process. So in order to get these old um, uh, Pantone books back into your, your new 2024 or 2023 versions of your software, um, I would recommend downloading all of the books and keeping them in a folder somewhere. I have mine right here on the desktop. And I actually downloaded these from this site here. And basically this just has the old versions that were back from 2019 or 2020, whatever it was. So five years ago, these um, uh, color libraries were saved up on this website and then basically put as a zip file. So I'll leave a link down in the description of the, of the video to this site. But basically, if you just go here where it says code and you go to download zip, this will download this folder here, or zip file. Um, and after you unzip it, it'll put it all in a folder. And then you can choose which of the color libraries to drag over to your newer um, software. 
And so real quickly to go through each one, I'll start with Illustrator here. So I go to, this is in my um, applications folder, or if this would be programs on a uh, PC. So I'll go into Adobe Illustrator 2024, go to your presets, English US, go to swatches, color books, and then here you can drag over whatever color books you want. For me, since I deal mostly with uh, paper printing, the solid coated and solid uncoated version 3 here and then the metallics and the pastels are the most commonly used versions of colors that I would find in my industry. Um, if you maybe deal more with like fabric printing and things like that, some of these, the F&H cotton, nylon, etc., those might be more appropriate for you. But whichever book you want, or you can even drag them all over if you want, just click on whichever ones you need, drag them over to this folder, and then next time you open up your Illustrator, it'll be available to you. So to do this in uh, InDesign, you're going to go to the InDesign folder here, go to um, Presets, and then you're going to go to the Swatch Libraries, and then same thing, you're going to drag these on over. And then lastly, for Photoshop, you're going to go to Photoshop 2024, Presets, color books and then drag those all over and so what are, what will happen is uh, obviously I've already done this but now when you open up a Photoshop uh, or a file within Photoshop these colors will now be available to you so if I go into my color tab here and you can see here it says color libraries before these Pantone color books were not available and now they are because I drag them on over and put them in that folder. So now it makes it a little bit easier for you to use the steps from the previous video to match an actual Pantone color. So I have my eyedropper uh, tool out here and I'm just going to click on this little teal area. So I click there. I'm going to double click on color and you can see it gives me a rough approximate uh, CMYK value, uh, your hex value here your or your RGB value. But if I want the actual Pantone color, I just click Color Libraries and I choose which Pantone book I uh, want to match to. So let's say I'm going to run this on an offset press. This is going to go on an uncoated sheet. So I want to go ahead and click on Solid Uncoated. And then by default, this is basically going to get you to the closest approximate match. So this is 2227U. That's going to be the color that we're going to uh, choose to name everything in this um, uh, setting up this spot color so that when we send it over to press the pressman is going to know hey we got to try to match this to 2227U out of the Pantone color book um, so basically what you're going to do is just like we did before in the last video so you're going to go to your select your color range here and you click OK, click on uh, New Spot Color, and then we're going to name this uh, 2227, and we're going to select Uncoded 2227, click OK. There's your name matching, your color matching, and you click OK. And now down here in your channels, you have a solid uh, Pantone 2227. I accidentally used the, the uh, uh, coded version instead of the uncoded, but you get the idea. Um, so that's going to be your 2227 coded uh, uh, channel. So now when you save this, drop it into Photoshop or excuse me, Illustrator or InDesign, create your layout, and then make your PDF. That color is going to come out as a not only as a spot color, but as a Pantone color that, like I said, if you're going to send this to an offset press, you output that particular plate, your offset press operator is going to match that color. Or if you send this over to a digital press, now your digital front end, fiery system, whatever it may be, is going to look up this color on its system and match its CMYK values to whatever uh, works with the digital press that you're using, whether it be Canon or Xerox, whatever the case. Um, 
So look at my previous video to go a little bit more detail into how to create the spot color channels if you're interested. But that is how to get your Pantone uh, libraries back into your Adobe programs. I was hoping to make this a little bit shorter than a video than it was, but um, that's basically how to do it. So if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I'm happy to help. Um, otherwise, I got some other videos coming up pretty soon. I have recently reached the first tier of monetization on YouTube. So if you can, you know, leave one of the super thanks down there below. That really helps out. Uh, hopefully, um, I'll do something with the membership level tier as well. I, I clicked on it, but I don't really know what direction I want to take in, into so far. But uh, I'll figure something out. I also am going to have some uh, a video with an announcement about it that I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and everything. But as always, just your likes, your sub uh, subscription, your comments down below goes a long way to making all the videos better and for more content in the future. So anyway, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'm happy to help. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next one. Take care.